welcome to the UC IPM Urban and Community Webinar Series. I'm Lauren Fordyce, the Urban and Community IPM Educator with UC IPM. Thank you for joining us today. So today's webinar is presented um, by Sandeepa Gautam on backyard grown citrus. Sandeepa joined UC IPM in July of 2021 as an area citrus IPM advisor and is stationed at the Lynn Cove Research and Extension Center. There she studies IPM strategies for manning citrus arthropod pests in the San Joaquin Valley. Thank you for joining us today, Sandeepa. You can now share your slides. Okay. Thank you, Lauren, for the introduction. Good afternoon, everybody. Um, my name is Sandeepa Gautam, and as Lauren said, I am an IPM advisor. My job is to study citrus pests and how to manage them, especially uh, for, for growers, but I also do outreach activities um, to educate public about citrus pests if you if you are um if you have citrus in your backyard. So um I would like to thank um UCIPM Urban and Community team, um Carrie, Belinda, Lauren for inviting me to talk to you today about um managing citrus in um managing pests in backyard citrus. So we're gonna talk a little bit about recognizing and managing insect pests in backyard citrus. Um, there are many pests that you may find in citrus um, and this webinar will focus on insects of citrus um, that will cover pest identification and available tools to manage them. And most of the message that you hear from me today is, hey, you don't need to actually worry about it because it doesn't cause any damage to citrus. So let's get started. Okay, so uh, the way that I have structured this presentation today is uh, we'll talk about pests in growth. Spring pests that come in the beginning of the season, they feed, cause damage and sort of disappear. So you probably will see the damage they cause. And summer pests, um, another group of pests, which does take some time to develop, go through the generations, and you'll probably see them in summer. Uh, for these pests also, you might see the damaged pest, pest itself. And last but not the least, I'm going to talk to you about Asian citrusillid and Wang Long Wing disease, um, and why is it important um, if you have citrus um, in your home. So um, to begin, um, you probably bought a citrus tree and planted it or you know it came with the property when you bought it or you got it as a gift and you want to know more about how to take care of it especially how to protect it from the best so um let's first talk about you know um citrus as a tree citrus is a perennial tree if you pro if you water it if you fertilize it it'll give fruit to you year after year but it does go through a seasonal cycle. So the seasonal cycle for citrus is uh, it flushes or, you know, uh, puts out new leaves early in the season, usually from January to March, depending on where you're located in the state. And uh, that is when the tree is pushing leaves. Um, that can, The flush can happen at different times of the year. It's not only during um, January to March that flushes happen, depending on varieties, depending on where you are. Tree can flush multiple times in the year. Um, then after, you know, especially after the early season flush, tree goes into flowering phase. It blooms and that's when um, pollination happens and fruit setting happens. Then it goes to the next developmental stage where that tiny fruit is developing and growing. And that can be anywhere from May to October. And as you can see, I have highlighted um, that young fruit because most of the pest, like like the young fruit, it's, it's an attractive um, source of food for them. And because the fruit is small, it's susceptible and any kind of dam is... Uh, that pests make on this fruit will grow as the fruit grows. And then comes harvest and November, um, harvest um, for citrus, which can happen anywhere from November to March. Some late season varieties can be harvested as late in um, as late as in July. So um, citrus is a home to many different species. It's a perennial tree. It's a it's an evergreen tree with 100,000 leaves on a tree. So it's, it's 
it's home to many pests and it's also a refuse to many other um, insects that might want to come and overwinter in um, in somewhere where it's green and has a lot of um, a lot of leaves and food source. So um, most of these citrus insects that you'd find in citrus are pretty much present in the orchard year round, but they're not always important. Um, what I have shown uh, in this um, in this slide is when are these pests important? These arrows are usually for uh, you know pest management recommendations. So let's let's look at this snails, which can be a pest in citrus, not an insect, but can be a pest in citrus. Um, like mature fruit, they feed on mature fruit, so they they're more of a problem in January, February, March um, when that fruit is still on the tree and gets harvested. Um, mites and aphids and citrus thrips, katydids, caterpillars and earwigs, which we'll talk about next, are problem in spring when that when the tree is flushing, there is tender leaves on the tree, and when the tree had just um, had fruit set, and when that young fruit is present on the tree. And several other pests, which we have grouped as summer pests, which are scale insects and mealy bugs, are usually more of a summer pest late in the season because they do take some time to develop um, from their overwintering, resting life, uh, stays of life. So um, what do you see when you look uh, on a citrus tree? What do you see on leaves versus what do you see on fruit? On leaves and twigs, you probably will find insect itself or they're feeding damage. So what you're looking at, the that first photo is of Asian citrus psyllid and um, Asian citrus psyllid on the lower side of the leaf. The second picture is um, scale insect, citricola scale. Third photos are, um, the best photos are citrus strips and of a young katydid. And down below on the leaves, what you can see is the feeding dam is caused by this insect. First picture, feeding dam is by earwigs that have biting and chewing mouthpots, so they just munch on it. The second photo, which shows the silvery uh, um, tunnel is by leaf miner that tunnels the leaf. And third picture on the, on the right um, is of citrus thrips feeding damage. And on young fruit and mature fruit, you might see damage caused by um, the pest. You may not find a pest, but you might see that there is damage. And usually that damage is damage already happened when the fruit was young and it grew with the um, it grew with the fruit, and you probably won't see the pest, but you'll see the damage. Um, and there are other pests like California red scale that you will see the pest itself on, on a piece of fruit. Okay, so let's get started with the spring pest. Pests that cause surface damage in citrus also uh, can be called early season pest or a spring pest. Citrus thrips is one of the um, important pests of citrus, especially for conventional growers, but uh, it's this species is native. Um, and is present present in California. Uh, it doesn't have a lot of crop host. Blueberry is the only crop, uh, other crop host uh, of citrus thrips. Um, so what they do is they feed on uh, leaves and they like to feed on young fruit, especially when they are a very small in size. These insects are about a millimeter in length. Um, the adults are winged. You, you're gonna need a hand lens to see them. Uh, the way to monitor for them is to go pick a flush early in the season, um, say in April, and then tap it over uh, your phone. I usually do it on my phone. And if the thrips are there, they'll fall out and they'll, you're going to see this tiny one millimeter in length insects. Um, one of the important things for, for us to remember uh, is that we don't worry about citrus thrips on leaves. Even the conventional growers don't worry about citrus thrips on leaves. It's the damage that may sew up on the mature fruit is what is concerning to growers. But then what is important for us to remember is that this scarring that the photos that you can um, see over here is the only damage on the surface, the very outer layer, that rind of citrus. It doesn't cause any 
um, any effect on the quality. So what to do about them? Ignore the thrips because the tree can tolerate thrips feeding. And there are natural enemies like uh, you can see over here, you see a stularensis feeding on thrips larvae. Um, it's a predatory mite that would give excellent biological control. Um, there is little research on um, really, you know, augmentative release of natural um, predators for managing thrips. Most of the most of the management recommendation is conservative biocontrol. So you don't spray uh, broad spectrum pesticide that would have effect on natural enemies so that you allow natural enemies to sort of develop um, on your tree. Um, another insect that cause surface damage on citrus strips that you may find if you have a, you know, fruit that looks like um, this, the, the photos on the on the very right side, a green fruit with a very circular damage, a little bit of sunken damage. That's that is the damage caused by um portal bush carried What they like to do is they they love to feed on a young fruit. They come out in the spring. Um, they only have one generation in a year. They come out in the spring and they go to that fruit and take a big chunk out of it. They don't finish off the fruit. They like to take a taste from one fruit, another fruit, and they, they just do that. That's how they feed. But then because they did take out a chunk from the fruit, the fruit grows around leaving this, leaving this scar which looks very circular. Again, this is also um, surface damage. It doesn't affect the quality of the quality of the fruit at all. Uh, European earwigs are other types of pests um, that like to feed on young and developing fruit um, and feeding damage results into a, sc a scarred fruit. They lay eggs on the ground. So one of the ways that you might want to, you know, manage uh, ear wigs is not have leaf litter on the ground because that kind of protects um, ear wigs um, and that becomes their breeding site. So keep the area under the under the tree clean. Um, there are other ways to monitor them and also use it as a monitoring and control method. You could wrap cardboard around the tree trunk. They like to hide under uh, in dark places so they would go there um, you can have tubes or roll newspapers around the tree trunk um, and when they are trapped you can just get, dispose of them you can also use can of oil like put them um, at the at the um, ground label um, to try and um, trap the trap the earwigs there are some um, products that are available like sl uh, Sluggo, which is a spinosad bait for um, earwigs um, that, that you may be able to use. Caterpillars are other insects that like to feed on um, citrus, although it's not very common, um, common pest of citrus. So this particular species, M Amorbia, has one life cycle. Um, per year, they emerge out of the pupa, emerges as adult from the soil early in um, March, and they lay eggs on leaves and those eggs hatch and they feed on, they feed on young citrus and they can, you know, they can leave this kind of scarring um, damage, um, damage on the fruit. Although uh, it's not a very serious pest, if you're concerned about it, you can use um, selective products that target only uh, only caterpillars. Um, citrus cutworm, another insect that um, you may find on citrus. This pest also has one generation um, and they feed on young fruit, especially if the larvae is big, as you can see in the photo over here on the left uh, corner, they can uh, they can bite and create create that um, surface damage that grows with the fruit and leaves leaves surface scar um, on the fruit. Again, um, not not a very serious pest of citrus, but if you're concerned about it, there are um, targeted, you know, uh, products that you can use um, to to control caterpillars. Bacillus thuringiensis products are um, targeted um, so that they only uh, only work in lepidopteran pest. Um, 
before I move on and summarize the um, spring pest, UCFM guidelines for pest um, gardens and landscape pest has a lot of information on managing this pest for um, home gardens in home garden situations. Um, you can visit this, visit the website and get a lot of um, information from there. Many of these pests have pest notes associated with them that covers um, what the pest is, how to identify it, um, what the life cycle is, what the damage looks like, and what are the ways to manage them. So um, make use of this resource. So to kind of summarize early season pest control, and this is what I was talking about earlier, uh, citrus strips, katydid, earwigs, all, caterpillars, all these insects are only causing surface damage to the rind of the fruit. We don't worry at all about the damage they cause, on, cause to a tree because tree can recover. Um, on leaves, uh, on fruit, they can, they can leave scarring damage, which can be concerning, but it is, it is not, uh, it does not affect the quality. So if you can, ignore the pest. Um, if you want to manage for year weeks, there are uh, trapping methods for caterpillar. There are um, targeted products uh, using BT um, that you can use to manage the pest. For citrus strips, pretty much ignore the pest. Now let's move on to the summer pest. As the weather warms up, the overwintering insects, scale and mealy bugs wake up and go through their first generation and second generation. And it's usually the second generation that would move onto, onto the fruit and they feed and multiply and you'll start noticing the pest itself, like in the photo here, or you start noticing the signs that the pest is present. Um, California red scale is one of the important um, pests for growers, and it's a common pest in citrus. It's also, you know, like the name suggests, native to California, and it attacks all parts of the tree. As you can see um, on the photos, it attacks twigs, it, it attacks leaves, and that second generation population in June, July will move to the fruit. It's a very unique and interesting pest because the crawlers are the only moving life states. Once the crawler move and find a suitable feeding spot, they insert their stylet, which is here like small, thin, um, modified mouth part um, into the fruit or leaf or twig tissue. And once they start feeding, they settle there, they produce the wax. Um, it's it's called an armored skill because that wax waxy covering is um, like an armor to them. Up close, they look like dots on a piece of fruit, as you can see um, on on the photos. Um, on the bins, you see a lot of brown looking, um, you know, fruits. That's red skill infestation. Uh, on the photos down below, you see what you see um, is a lot of brown brown dots those are adult um california red scale females the white dots that you see over there are the um immatures of the same same insect and um the photo on the very right corner down is um is up close how california red scale looks like for management, uh, this insect has an army of natural enemies that provides excellent biological control. We have a phytis, a phytis wasp that uh, lay eggs on the scale, uh, which hatches and grows and feeds on the scale. What you see over here is a phytis melanius um, parasitoid adult. And the photo right next to it has two, if you look closely, two larvae of a phytis on the red scale insect itself. That's how the scale insect looks like when that um, covering, that waxy covering is um, removed. Um, and the next photo is the pupae of the parasitoid, just read, getting ready to immerse. There is another parasitoid called Comperiola bifiscata. Both of these parasitoids you can purchase in the insect tree and there are other generalist predator um, like green wing and rhizobius beetles that are present in, you know, present in the citrus system. Um, citrus is a home to these trees. Um, but some ants do interfere with the biocontrol. Ants will come and protect the scales from predators and parasitoids. So controlling ants is advised if you have 
ants um, um, in your backyard, control them, prune out the dead wood and open up the tree canopy, opening up the tree canopy, especially to keep the, you know, middle of the tree open would help next door enemies to access the pest when they are where they are. And if you have heavy infestation you and you want to manage it, you can apply oil, um, just any um, petroleum oil recommended for citrus, 415 or Omni oil um, in June to August, usually um, when the second generation have emerged. So in, in June, but not during uh, very hot weather. Um, for oil application, the weather has to be around 95, below 95 degree Fahrenheit. Um, another scale insect is brown soft scale um, that may be present depending on where you are in the San Joaquin Valley, it's not a very common pest. Um, similar to red scale, this insect also, you know, could be found on all parts of the tree. The, the adults prefer to be on the twigs. The first one starts when they hatch, they move out and they, they settle on leaves and feed and they produce a lot of honeydew. Honeydew is um, some... It's a sugary substance that's produced by these sap sucking insects. When they suck the sap, they process it, process it, and they have to eject it out of their system because they need to drink a lot. So uh, that sugary substance is very attractive to ants. Um, it because it is a nutrition source. There is the mold that grows on it, and it. Um, it's called sooty mold, the black mold that you see in your citrus trees um, on the photos, photo over here can also be an indicator that your um, your trees may have um, scale or um, some honeydew producing insect. Uh, this also has excellent biological control by parasitic wasps. You can help the nest run enemies by pruning out the dead wood and by controlling ants. Um, another pest that we commonly see in citrus, you know, um, is cottonicus in a scale. This is, this can be a serious pest if the biocontrol, which is vedalia beetle, is taken out of the system. This can get really bad really fast. Um, this is also sap sucking insects, produces a lot of honeydew that, um, so, you know, on which the sooty mold grows and your trees, your tree, your leaves and um, your fruit can be uh, covered by covered by sooty mold in very short period of time. Uh, this insect also has excellent biological control. It is actually one of the classic examples of classical biological control in California. This is not native uh, to California. The pest came from Australia and um, Scientists went over to Australia to look for natural enemies and brought this um, Bedalia beetle to California in the early 1900s and released it. And since then, the, the Bedalia beetle has established in 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 our area. It's present unless you use broad spectrum insecticides and kill the Bedalia beetles. Then Cotinicus and scale can can get pretty um, pretty scary to manage. Um, another pest you may see uh, is mealybugs. Mealybugs are common pest in common in citrus. Um, mealybugs also have a lot of other hosts, lots of organic, uh, lots of ornamental plants. Sorry, lots of ornamental plants can um, can support mealybug, uh, hibiscus, marigold um, that you plant around your house. And other, other species of um, ornamental plants can also um, support mealybugs. This is also another pest that produces a lot of honeydew and sooty mold grows on it. Um, there are several species, four species of uh, mealybugs that are commonly found in citrus, but the most common one is Planococcus citri, which is the one on the top uh, left corner. It's a pink looking mealybug. There is a brown line that runs through the center and there is long-tailed mealybug which is which has this long filaments um if you have mealybug on your trees um you would usually find them in between the clusters like the forest zone in here um again there is excellent biocontrol um by predatory beetles and anagyrus species so you can uh you can rely on your you know our natural friends uh to control this pest um 
We can help them by pruning out the weed, uh, pruning out the wood and controlling ants. And if you have a lot of mealybugs on the fruit, you can also hose it off um, using, you know, a little bit pressure wash. Um, like I said, there is excellent biological control. These are some of the pictures I took uh, from citrus trees around the area um, and reared them and found, you know, anagyrus species coming out of them. Um, some close-up pictures of how parasitized mealybugs look like. You may need a hand lens to um, to see them, see them. But um, healthy mealybugs are white, covered with the white mealy wax. Parasitized mealybugs are sluggish, sort of um, dark looking, has spots, and you can see um, the cocoons of parasitoids in there. Um, if you're in the coastal region, Cryptolemus beetle is your friend. It's it's called the mealybug destroyer, and um, it the larvae looks pretty much similar to mealybug. The middle photo on the right side, um, adult is the top photo on the right side. The larvae looks very similar to um, citrus mealybug, and they're excellent predators of um, citrus mealybug. Down below is the lace wing larvae feeding on um, citrus mealybug and stars. Um, another sooty mold producing insect that is present in citrus system, not that big of a pest, but you know it's present in the citrus. Citrus, um, so we we talk about it, right? Uh, it's it's white flies. There are several species of white flies present in California. Uh, different uh, species are shown in the pictures on the left here. Um, there are winged white flies and there are some like citrus white fly, woolly white fly, bayberries that are sort of wingless most of their life stays in. Um, they also suck sap and produce a lot of honeydew and sooty mold develops on them. Um, ants love them and they protect these insects from um, natural enemies that come to attack. So uh, one way to manage them is by controlling ants. And if there's sooty mold and, you know, um, white flies, you can also use water to uh, hose it off. Again, I've been talking about this, right? Um, ants, when present, can disturb biocontrol, especially the sugar feeding ants like Argentine ants, native gray ants, um, pretty much established throughout California. And um, the ants also become active um, in the spring and develop their colony through the summer and during late spring, early summer, they are foraging so that they can collect food and bring it to their to their nest uh, to brood their colony. So um, they would very aggressively defend these honeydew producing insects from natural enemies that come to come to feed on feed on them. So um, to control the Summer pest, especially the honeydew producing one, uh, ones control ants around the around the trees. Um, that would help biocontrol be more effective. And there are different ways to control ants, as there are different types of ants. Some types of ants, such as um, southern fire ant, um, are protein feeders, and there are other ants that are sugar feeders, like Argentine ants and field ants are uh, sugar feeding ants. So there are different types of baits available for sugar feeding ants and protein feeding ants. And you could also use physical barriers like tangle foot or surface treatments like pyethroids to control ants. So for a scale mealybug, whitefly, all these honeydew producing insects and citrus, you prune the trees, to open up them to natural, um, open them up to natural enemies, treat the ants to protect parasites and uh, parasites and predatory beetles. Um, if there is uh, sooty mold and bugs present on fruits and leaves, you can hose it off uh, using water. You can also use horticultural spray oil, which is, you know, natural uh, petroleum oil in the summer, um, 415 oil or Omni oil um, in the summer from June to August. Um, avoid using broad spectrum insecticides like organophosphates and carbamates um, unless the infestation is, is very severe and you need to go back rely on these um, these products um, because when these products are pretty um, harsh on natural enemies and would disrupt the the biocontrol um, 
so that's that's all there's other pests um uh, in citrus that could be present and you probably wouldn't see the pest but you'd notice the damage is the citrus peel miner it's a fly it it lays eggs on the um on the surface of the fruit and that larvae when it hatches it it starts mining um the peel and it creates all these very artistic tunnels on a piece of fruit it can look unsightly um and that's what you see over here on this um on these pictures so it does look unsightly but then again this is also the surface pest it doesn't cause any damage uh, to the fruit so ignore if you can um Citrus leaf miner is another tunnel, another insect that tunnels. It's the same, um, it's same genus, different species of miner uh, as um, as peel miner. So this one particular doesn't feed on uh, fruit. It it creates tunnels on young flowers. You probably notice it more in young orchards or when the tree is flushing, that you have all these silvery looking tunnels. Um, they kind of disappear after the leaves have matured because they can't feed on mature leaves. How can you control it? Because it does look unsightly um, to look at the leaf miner uh, damaged leaf. One of the things you could do is avoid pruning heavily um, and don't apply nitrogen more than once a year. Why? Because heavy pruning uh, will tell the tree to flush more and there will be more flush, which is attractive to leaf miners. And, you know, over application of nitrogen also means more flush. So if you limit the flush, there will be less leaf miners. Um, insecticides used only on potted or very young trees, mature trees can tolerate the tolerate damage um, because there are lots of, lots of trees, uh, lots of leaves. And um, the insecticides, there are several options, bare advanced, citrus and vegetable, um, green light, which is a organic product, spinosad, and neem as a directin, which is also organic product. Um, again, natural enemies, avoid using insecticide that will kill natural enemies, generally predators and parasitic wasp, um, provide um, biological control. Um, another pest that is not an insect is um, brown garden snails, especially in a year like we ha we had when we have a lot of rain in the spring that makes snails active um, and they feed on both leaves and um, and on fruit. They especially prefer ripening fruit. So late in the season, um, you know, December, January, February is when they would go to the fruit, make all these tunnels and uh, does look ugly. Um, how you can manage them? Um, there are these predatory snails present in, present in California, which are called decollated snails. So know which ones are predatory snails, which ones are uh, pest snails. The predatory snails have this cone, uh, cone separate cell. Um, you can prune the trees up so that snails don't have you know a pathway to climb up to the tree. Uh, you can handpick them, you can use traps, um, you can use a trunk barrier, um, and you can use baits like Slogo, Deadline, uh, Cory's, and Slug and Snail Bait to, um, to control them. Um, in addition to damages caused by, you know, pests, you may also see that your fruit has different types of surface damage, and here are some of the uh, common damage that you may see. If you're using herbicides around your tree, you might notice uh, these dark spots, especially on the fruits that are closer to the ground, um, which may be herbicide damage from, you know, from drifting. Um, the other type of damage is branch scratches, scratches or, you know, um, if you are using, hazing the tree, um, some mechanical damage caused by um, machines. Um, another type of damage is sunburn, which is very common, uh, especially in the valley here where the sun is very bright in summer. Um, sun scalding looks like off color and when there's when that fruit is exposed, especially on the on the south side of the uh, of the tree, you might see a lot of fruit that has um, 
that has off color it's hardened a little bit so that that's the um, damage caused by sun you can prevent that uh, by spraying kaolin clay um, or you know just lime a uh, white was the tree um, if it's a it's a common um, issue for you okay now let's move on to the last uh, first for today's talk uh, is in citrus psyllid I wanted to start with Wang Long Bing because th that's what we're concerned about Wang Long Bing is an incurable bacterial disease that rapidly kills citrus trees and that is vectored by is in citrus psyllid the species name is Diaphonia citri um, what you see over here is an adult adult of the um, insect uh, it has a very peculiar resting a resting character it rests at a 45 degree angle that's one way to identify it when it's um, in its resting position this insect loves laying eggs on that very young flush the nymphs cannot feed on mature um, mature leaves so in they only survive by living on young tender leaves and a stem which is the new flush so if the, when the tree is flushing um, check these young flowers for yellow looking eggs and these nymphs with waxy tu tubules. Um, why are we so worried about this psyllid? You probably have heard about psyllid one way or another in one meeting or another or in the press releases um, or have seen signs about, about it. So this insect is a sap sucking insect. It's a pest in itself, but it is more concerning because it can pick up the bacterium that causes Wang Long Bing disease and move the disease from citrus tree to citrus tree as it feeds. The bacterium blocks the nutrient flow in the tree um, so that tree cannot absorb nutrient from the roots and slowly dies over time. In you know, first symptoms can look like um, nutrient deficiency. That's why it's known as yellow suit disease in Chinese. Um, once the tree has bacterium, it then starts, uh, the twigs start dying, the tree starts losing leaf. Um, there will be less fruit on the tree and the fruit is off and and the, the production goes down. This disease to date has no cure. In Florida, SCP and um, disease have established, there are, uh, well, that's a conservative uh, number, but there are more than 50% pure orchards and lower production in existing orchards. And Florida is treating eight to 12 times a year for psyllid, even though uh, disease is already present because they want to manage um, entry point for diseases. So they are still treating uh, very heavily uh, in, in you know, um, commercial growers are treating very heavily. In California, ACP is present in Southern California. Um, disease has been reported in back at citrus, um, which is what we'll talk about next. So this is our California situation. What you see over here is the um, pest control district in different areas of California within the purple, um, purple boundaries. The yellow dots are commercial citrus growing areas. The gray area is where citrus psyllid has been found in trap cards. And the red areas are current HLB quarantine areas. So commercial growers in Northern California and Southern California have different pest management plan because in Central Northern California, the pest is not established. So the growers have what we call eradicative methods. When the pest is found on a trap, um, that commercial grower, or you know, if it's found on a backyard that that homeowner is contacted by cdfa or a grower liaison and they treat that area um 800 meters around around the find in urban areas it's about 400 meters and they also release parasite uh, parasite tamarixia radiata for um isin citrocytid in southern california um there is what we call area-wide treatment um, program where commercial growers treat together over a period of two to three week window so that everybody's treating at the same time. So psyllids are not moving from one place and establishing in another. Um, and as I said, psyllid is everywhere in Southern California is gradually establishing in Northern California. The disease quarantine area is increasing. So there is a big role that um, 
general public and uh, those of us who have um, citrus in our back ads have to play because six out of 10 residences in California have at least one citrus tree. So knowing what the um, insect looks like, what the damage looks like is very, um, very important um, to save our California citrus industry. So how do I look for the salad? Look for the new leaves because look for the young fluffs because that's where adults would lay their eggs. Um, nymphal salads and waxy tubules that they produce. You can't, they're small, so you need a hand lens to see them, but you know, you can't miss them because of how distinct they look and, and the waxy tubule they uh, produce. If you see adults or if you see nymphs, you immediately call your county commissioner or the CDFA hotline. Either way, act very fast and contact the authorities. The authorities will get back to you and treat, um, treat that area. You can help by staying informed and talking about how homeowners can protect their citrus. You can talk to your neighbors, you can talk to your family, uh, you can talk to your kids. Um, if you love crafting citrus, use the disease-free budwood from Citrus Colonial Protection Program um, so that you're only using um, budwood that's free of the disease. Um, that's one way disease can be transmitted from one, uh, one tree to another tree. Plant, when you're planting, also plant only disease-free citrus plant obtained from a reputable nursery. Um, it's a common practice to gift citrus tree. Um, when you're gifting somebody, get a disease-free plant from a reputable nursery. Uh, do not move plant material around the state. There is uh, quarantine boundaries around the state. Follow the regulations. Learn to rec recognize the pest in disease. And if you suspect that you may have salad or the disease, call CDFA hotline and um, allow the officials to come and inspect and test your citrus trees for disease. If the HLB is found, the tree must be destroyed. Um, so cooperation uh, here is also very, um, very important. Um, can be underemphasized. Um, and also follow Science for Citrus Health website to learn about what scientists are doing to fight this disease. Um, Science for Citrus Health translates all these um, technical information that researchers put out into one-page documents or podcasts or you know webinars to educate um, general public and about um, research progress that is uh, that has been made to manage the disease and its insecticide. So take home messages um, for today's webinar. Most of the fruit is scarring is because of the pests that like to feed on citrus, but don't cause any, any quality damage. It's mostly cosmetic damage. For example, citrus thrips, Katie did uh, worms that we talked about today. Ignore them and eat the fruit. Most honeydew producing insects have a very good biological control program. So allow the natural enemies to do their job, help them by controlling ants um, and prune the trees to remove um, dead wood. Avoid treating foliage with protospectrum insecticide that eliminates natural enemies. For example, parasites, carbamids and pyrethroids are very um, harsh on um, parasites and predatory beetles. Pyrethroids and imidacloprid and insect growth regulators are harmful to the beetles. Um, also, leaf miner and peel miner. Leaf miner is a common pest that we um, that we see uh, everywhere. Uh, try to ignore the damage because leaf miner doesn't cause any damage to the fruit, which is what we eat. And peel miner, it, the damage is just on the surface. It doesn't cause any um, damage to, to the fruit. Snail can be um, controlled in a number of ways and um, acin citrusilid, the last uh, insect we talked about and HLB disease, it transits our threat to California citrus called CDFA um, and um, inform local authorities about this insect if you suspect that you may have an insect um, on, your, on your trees or the disease. Okay, that's the last slide I have. Yeah, thank you, Sandeepa. Lots of great information. Um...